What is up, everybody? It's a new year, and I know I'm making this video a little bit late, but this video needs to go out there for me and for you guys as well, too. And as you can probably tell by the title of this video, you already know what I'm talking about, is setting some goals for the new year. Uh, I don't want to make excuses, but I was a little late on this video because we just went over to Florida and I got really busy with a couple of projects. But this video needs to go out there so that you guys can make maybe a video on this or maybe you guys can do your own similar concept just like this. But in this video, I'm talking about some of my personal goals that I want to be able to hit this new year. And I'm also going to be talking about how exactly I plan on getting there, how, I plan on, how exactly I plan on achieving there. Because what I always find, I mean, this is just sad, I forgot who said this, but a person, a man with a plan can beat, no, it was like a, a, a dumb man with a plan can always beat a genius without a plan. So like I said, this video, we're talking about some of the goals I have, and I just want to make this video so that you as well can, the viewer, you watch this video, can also make yourself some goals. Uh, maybe this will inspire you to make your own goals yourself and also help you develop some sort of plan of action to be able to achieve those goals. So enough ranting. Let me just tell you some of my goals that I have. And I'm going to be breaking this down in a cool way that I think has proven to bring me the most amount of success. And that way is, is like a formula. And how it's set up is we have this one, I just hit a light up here. We have this one like big goal right here. And then we're gonna break it down into smaller little steps in order to achieve that big goal. My biggest goal that I really wanna hit is I wanna be able to hit my first million dollars. I wanna be able to make my first million dollars, okay? And this light is banging right off the mirror because I just smacked it with my hand, stop. All right, cool. <laughs> I want to be able to make my first million dollars. And I have a couple of ways that I want to be able to do so. Matter of fact, I have a, a, a lot of ways I want to be able to do so. And that mostly comes down to three main aspects of my life, three main business portions of my life that I'm very, very passionate in doing. Uh, the first couple of things, the first thing, actually, I'll bring it down. The first thing that I'm very passionate about is, is my crypto, right? I love trading NFTs, all right? So my first thing that I guess how we get to a million dollars is probably gonna be trading my NFTs and getting into these other projects that produce passive income for me. Okay. So first one is is crypto projects. So NFTs and other crypto projects. My other portion is going to be my marketing. Okay. And I'm and I'll be breaking this down a little bit more in detail in a quick second. I'm just getting into overall concept. So the crypto projects is next one's going to be marketing. And the next one is going to be this new project that I actually started with a couple of buddies. It's called Valify. So all those in conjunctions in the, is going to allow me to be able to reach my goal of hitting a million dollars. And let me explain exactly how I'm going to do this. So what better yet to really explain how I'm going to break down my goals than to bust out my fancy, my fancy little sketch pad over here. So we go over here, we should draw my little whiteboard over here, full screen that, cool, cool. So my goal to hit one mil, right? I mean, that's just a small realistic goal, right? Overall, I feel like after hitting a million dollars, I wanna be able to hit billions of dollars. And I know I can do that, okay? I know everybody watches video, whatever you put your mind to, you can absolutely do. You're just completely limited by your, your mindset. And going off of that, what I also want to be able to do this as another goal is I want to be able to change my mindset a little bit. Instead of, instead of praying that uh, I hope I'm going to get, I'm going to get this. I hope I'm going to get this. You know, please, let God, let me get this. I want to be more thankful for the steps I already have in place to be able to achieve those goals. So I just want to do a little bit of a mindset change, you know? So, I mean, and I already see that. I already, already started that in this new 20, this new year. And so far, it's, it's making me feel a lot better, too. Being more thankful rather than wishing for something. You know, instead of being, like, anxious for the future, I'm thankful for what I already presently have. This just allows me to be more in the present state 
rather than looking too much into the future, you know? I'd rather focus on what I can do today to achieve those goals rather than just always wishing I can get to wishing the future would happen already. You know, I don't know. I hope that was the best way of kind of explaining that. I hope you guys understand that. All right, cool. So then you break down my goals and I find the best way to really break down your goals is kind of make like a tree over here. So obviously we're gonna have this big goal of hitting a million, million dollars, but we're gonna branch it down to mainly three things. So I guess we will call the top one, one mil, right? That's the, that's the main goal right there. For now, after I hit that one million goal, oh baby, I'm going to my billions, all right? But the main thing is that I wanna hit the million dollar year goal. And there's gonna be three main things that I just said that I'm going to, that's going to allow me to be able to hit that goal. Now, the first thing is going to be my, my trading NFTs. I, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm loving that. I'm so passionate about the past couple of months. Um, not past couple, multiple different months, I've been trading NFTs. Sometimes I've been profiting, other times I hadn't been profiting. Uh, sometimes I just cut my losses, you know. But so the one thing over here that's allowed me to do though, this is NFTs. Okay, cool. But that's just not just gonna happen, not just gonna become amazing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna break down what I need. So I need to actually say that profitable NFTs are profitable. sales okay and yeah so profit on seat sales nft sales and let's say so we're gonna break this down to three portions and say that i hit 300k over here okay next one so we call this funnel hacker lab this one i hit 300k over here as well actually the next one 400 okay <clears throat> Excuse me. And the next one's Valify. Cool. Next one's the Valify. Valify, I want to be able to also hit 300K. All right. So those are my main three portions of my life. I know Valify just came up as like a new one. Uh, you guys probably know a lot from me from credit repair marketing. I'm trying to reorient in my life so that now I don't only focus on solely credit repair, but I also focus on more of the bigger picture and I can help more people. Because I know a lot of people watch my YouTube channel. You guys, you guys always mention like, Blade, you're always talking about credit repair marketing. Why don't you talk about like e-commerce? Why don't you talk about other things like that? Well, first of all, the biggest thing, the reason why I always talk talk about credit marketing is I'm also very passionate about uh, the field of credit repair too. And I find that I can deliver the best results in there. But I have done software marketing. I have done construction marketing. I have done marketing for chiropractors and coaches. So what I want to be able to do is instead of just solely focusing on mainly filming a bunch of different credit repair videos, I want to be able to diversify more and overall help people in the overall general concept of helping people in, in marketing in, in general. Because realistically, what I found is by, by, by recent, what I found is that the overall strategies to really blow up your business, it doesn't differentiate between niche. What I'm trying to say is that the overall strategy is relatively the same. So I feel confident enough that I can teach it. So that I feel confident enough that, yeah, because I'm doing software marketing, I can also help out with e-commerce marketing. I can help out with, well, I've done coaching marketing. I can help out with other things. I help people sell courses and things like that. So not only am I, what I'm trying to say is I'm not only going to focus on specifically credit repair. I'm going to focus on marketing as a general so I can help the most amount of people as possible. All right. So this is, this is the overall concept right here to hit the $1 million mark thing right there. Okay. And yeah, in order to hit that $1 million marketing, there also has to be one more thing that has to change in my life as well. That one biggest thing that really needs to change, even before any of this stuff over here, in between any of my other businesses changes, the biggest thing you got to change is I got to be, and I know this personally, right? And I'm feel confident enough in saying this, is that I know I need to be more thankful. I don't need to be more thankful and I need to be more grateful for the things that I do. Because a lot of times when I'm working and I, and I pull out sometimes like 12 hours a day just working on my businesses and just trying to do things try to get to the next level. I'm always trying to increase, 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 bring more money, more money, more money. 
where I, I don't, I don't, I don't always take the time to kind of step back, maybe take a chill pill, relax and appreciate what I've accomplished so far. And I, and I, I'm not trying to be boastful, but what I'm trying to say is this, for you guys as well, too. Anybody watching this, a lot of people, I, I know so many people are exactly like how I am. And that's why I'm saying this is that when you're working a lot, you don't always get a time to just take a step back and just appreciate and just be grateful for what you've accomplished so far. So, one thing in my last week of my life is that I want to be more grateful. So in order to achieve this goal, okay? And I feel like that that mindset change is going to help me. So being more grateful, being more thank, grateful and thankful, kind of like the same thing. Be more grateful and thankful, I want to be able to do. I need to also be able to, uh, what did I say before? I want to be more in the present as well too, okay? Because so I find that this doesn't always happen, but I find when you're going to go to sleep or something like that, when I wake up, or maybe I'm, I'm just in the mood or something like that, that if I... If I think about the future too much, I'm too anxious. If I think about the, the past too much, I, I, live, I get sad. And I feel like that just happens with everybody. So I don't want to I don't want to waste time with emotions, really. I don't want to waste my valuable energy in emotions. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to focus more on the present so that I don't have to be too anxious about the future or too sad about the past. Because that's what I found to really just happen. So in addition to being more present, I want to be more thankful as well, okay? So uh, like I said, I even changed up when I, when I pray to God at night. I, I say, thank you, Lord, for putting the steps into place for me to achieve my million dollar a month goal. Overall, that's really my goal. <coughs> Thank you for putting the steps into place for me to achieve. Thanks, thank you so much for allowing me to get to where I am. Things like that, you know? All right, but let's get back to this. All right, enough preaching from the choir. <laughs> so, profit and NFTs. I need to hit 300K there. Okay, so Blade, how am I going to hit 300K there? Well, this is very simple. Let's break this down. 300K uh, for the year. What does that equate to kind of per month? I think it's like 30. You hit 25K per month right here, right? Was it? Yes, right. 25K. This means 25K is it equals to. Equals 25K a month. But even before that, I first need to be able to develop my strategy to really be more profitable on my energy sales. Because, like I said, some of my energy sales. They're, they're very profitable. They make, me, they make me bank sometimes. But sometimes they don't make me bank. Sometimes I screw up. Sometimes I FOMO in. So a couple of things before. And by the way, this crypto section, we're just, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm only going to talk about NFTs. I'm not going to talk about my other DeFi projects. I'm not going to talk about Strong here. I'm not going to talk about those other things, okay? But overall in crypto in general, I want to hit 300K. And to do that, I want to do that through NFTs and a couple other projects. But for the point of this video, to keep it simple, this is what I'm gonna do. I have a bigger branch, a bigger tree, trust me, in my in my journal over here. But yeah, so energy sales, 25K a month. Cool. But in order to do that first, I need to become profitable. So I need to develop a strategy that consistently makes me money every single time. And in order to do so, there's a couple of things that I sometimes even still screw up. One of the biggest things is, whoops, I sometimes FOMO into projects too early, okay? Sometimes I FOMO into projects too early. So for example, oops. So for example, um, well, this, this is last week, uh, there's a project, it, it was a companion or something like that. And what happened, and what happened is they had their pre-sale and as soon, I don't know why I look places and I think, but that just happens. But what happened is this pre-sale uh, for the companions. And during the pre-sale, immediately after the pre-sale, people put it on to OpenSea, that's the marketplace. And immediately I, I picked up two. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab it right now. But the problem was that the public sale was the day after. And the public sale, the price, because of the public sale and the minting price, 
the price dropped to 0.6 or 0.7. Now the mid price was like 0.7. The pre-sale price is like 0.5. So what happened is people got into the pre-sale, let's say 0.5 Ethereum, and they immediately put on open seas for like point for like one Ethereum. It's just say which is an example. I don't know the exact numbers, but they said the pre-sale was at like 0.5 Ethereum. They put on open seas for like one Ethereum. I immediately fumbled into that and I got it. They got two campaigns for like one Ethereum. Whereas the next day they had a public sale. Um, and the public sale is sold for like 0.7 Ethereum. And they because a whole more because a plethora of people immediately hopped into this, they have the 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 they posted onto open seas for 0.8 and that was the floor price. So what I'm trying to say is I could have gotten that NFT for 0.2 less than what I got because I just phoned it in right in the beginning. I know those aren't the numbers, but I'm just trying to give you an example of what happened. Overall, I mean, overall still a little profitable. I could have made more money, so I'm trying to say. Yeah, so my first thing I got to get rid of is I got to get that FOMO out of me, okay? Next thing I got to figure out is, next thing I got to do is I need to be able to do more research on the developers. So more on devs, All right, cool. More research on the developers. Now, this is just common based upon fixing some mistakes I've done in the past. So I've been in a couple of projects, right? Uh, this is mostly when I was first starting out. And I've been in these couple of projects where complete rug pulls, all right? This is straight up, complete rug pulls. So for example, like Ring Financial. I know it's not an NFT project, but it's just a good example that I can use. Um, Ring Financial developers completely pulled that SHIT out, you know? Uh, I did make some quite a bit of money in the very beginning. I uh, didn't really lose money, but it's not the fact that I need to do more research. I need to better understand the concept that's involved, better understand the roadmap that's involved and really and really make a good educated guess if this was sustained for a long term. Now I know this is not an NFT project, but this is just an example and I can give you another example after. But Ring Financial, I should have known that how could how could it possibly be that 0.55 ring rewards a day would be profitable just based upon their concept where they invest in other DAOs, you know? Something like that. Another project, um, well, I don't want to name any more NFT projects that were rug pulls, uh, because there's quite a few. <laughs> uh, Stack Toads, you know, Disto Mice, uh, all those other projects, you know? So what I'm trying to say is I need to start doing more. I want to be able to do more research on the developers and make sure the developers are actually replicable, right? It also comes along with doing more research on the roadmap, I guess. Uh, and other things like that, develop a better strategy so I can better flip these uh, NFTs. So FOMO, do better research. Um, and I also, I think that's good for now. Uh, I might come back into this one. Next thing we got, right? Oh, so uh, real quick. So let me break this down a little bit further. So in order for me to, this is fine for now. In order for me to stop FOMOing into projects, there's another thing I gotta be able to do that. There's another thing I gotta be able to change. And right, now it's kind of like a mindset thing here is the FOMO, fear of missing out. Because it's straight up in the main name, fear of missing out. I need to be able to be more confident in my decisions, okay? So in order for the FOMO to kind of stop and me to make more educated guesses, I need to be able to develop more confidence in my trades, more confidence in myself, okay? I need to be able to not emotionally buy, but as soon as you see a good deal, take a break. But I think for a second, does this make sense? Is this logical? Would I do this without emotion? Then make a trade. I need to really, really the overall learn, it, the thing I gotta learn is I need to learn to stop I need to learn to not like spend money when I'm emotional, I guess. I think that's the best way to kind of put it, right? So this really comes down to being more confident. I think that's the best way to say that. More research on the developers, 
like more FOMO, more confident, more research from the developers. Um, in order to do that, um, I need to be able to follow all their socials, and also follow socials, um, talk with devs, talk with mods, um, maybe, maybe join the team or something like that, provide suggestions and see if they actually respond to those. Whatever, provide suggestions, see if they actually respond to that. Because like, for example, in the Ring Financial Scandal, uh, I was trying to provide them suggestions and things like that and they didn't respond at all. So that's something you gotta look out for, okay? Um, Oh, another thing. So this is this is what I forgot before. Uh, I gotta look out for big influencer calls. Look for influencer call. Look for insert influencer call outs. What I mean by that is alien friends. They their original min price was like 0.02. Now on open seas, they're worth like three Ethereum. So that's like a 300 extra something like that. All right. It's it's a big, it's a big markup. And if you think about it, the Discord, right? Well, I don't know. I, I wasn't in the Discord previously, but the Discord has like 30k members. So I'm trying to say it doesn't have a lot of members, but the people in the Discord are very engaged. But what really blew up Alien Friends was Gary V's call out. So what I need to do is I need to start putting up a routine for me. I need to develop a routine that I'm going to be more vigilant on Twitter, right? Look for insert call outs. Twitter, especially with like Gary V, that boy, that man, you know, he knows what he's doing, right? And whenever he calls something out, those projects slow up, you know? So I need to be more vigilant on Twitter. I want to be able to wake up every morning, uh, check my Twitter. I know you probably shouldn't be doing that when you wake up, honestly. Uh, but maybe wake up, work out a little bit, do my push-ups. Uh, once I kind of feel ready, then look at Twitter. I'm trying to say. So I can be more vigilant for the call-outs. Right? So Gary V shouts out another project. I got to be on that. <laughs> All right. Another thing is I also want to make sure I stay very active on my calendar. Okay, I want to make sure I'm very active in my calendar and also in my Telegram group so that I not only help myself, but I also help everybody that's uh, that joined the Only Crypto Fans membership and they can check out the exact calls that I'm going to be joining and hopping into. All right, that's another thing. So, more active on my Telegram. Uh, I can just put that over here. Whatever. Active on Telegram. Well, it's not really comes down to being active on there. Um, because I already am pretty active. As you guys, for those of you who don't know, um, what I'm doing, I'm in the process of switching up the only crypto fans membership. You pay like 12 to like uh, $16 to be in this membership where I just call out a bunch of NFTs, crypto projects, passively producing assets, other things like that. Um, these things on, on, a, on a, well, originally it was on a Discord. Now I'm moved over to Telegram. If you're interested in that, just click the link down below. Yeah, so I want to be more active on there. I actually want to engage people more. Is that's what I want to do? I already am active. I want to be able to engage the people more, so that they can refer other people. So I want to be able to engage the people more. Make sure that they fully understand how to get these NFT projects, how to get into X, Y, and Z, and all those things. You know, that's something I need to do. I need, I need to make sure I know them all on a personal first name basis, or well, at least try to know them all on a first name basis. All right, at least for now. Sorry, we'll just use the wrong pen that would not have been good, but put that on there. All right, cool. Next thing, Funnel Hacker Lab. All right, so this, I want to be able to hit 400K. So now 400K divided by 12. That's around 33,000 33, a month. And guys, by the way, I know that they seem like some crazy numbers. I know you might be thinking like, Blade, these are some crazy, 
my numbers right here. No way this is possible. Well, if you're already thinking that, it's not going to happen. Okay. What I'm trying to say is that anything is completely possible. And you just got to be confident in yourself to be able to achieve these numbers. You know, I've already achieved some, some great numbers uh, in my months, in my, in my life. You know, as a 22-year-old, I've already achieved some great profits in my life. And I know for a fact that I can definitely boost up what I currently have to be able to do this. But I just have to be able to follow a couple of rules and follow my plan. So in order for me to really be able to hit Funnel Hacker Labs, make that generate me 33K a month, I had to do a couple of things, right? So one of the first things that I got to be able to do is I want to be able to record a shit ton of more videos trying to help people out. So Funnel Hacker Labs, I want to be able to make two to three vids last week, okay? What is going to require me? I need to, every start of every month, I need to make topics and videos, all right? Even if I need to hire somebody in Fiverr just to help me out, it's fine, you know? So I need to make more topics. I need to really engage the community more, so. Answer all comments. Check ready, kind of do. All right. I need to. I need to look back at my previous videos, and see what really outperformed. So check in my history. Is what I'm gonna call it. All right. And check out my history. And just see what really was worked well, what you guys like to see, you know, based upon just statistics and stuff like that. All right. Next thing I need to do is I need to make my actual Facebook group. I need to make that actually, I want to bring on, you rise up those numbers. You're right anywhere, like 150 people on there. Um, we need to bring that up. We need to bring that up significantly. All right. So I need to be more active on my group. I need to get more people engaged. So let's go over here Facebook group more active and now my hair really sucks guys make fun of me in the comment section down below stuff or roast me right roast me <laughs> all right so i want to be more active in my phone i can live group now what that's a what that comes down to is me like first thing posting every single video that i make fun of collabs i post it straight into the group almost immediately Next thing, I got to put a bunch of more polls on there, All right? So post vids, which I already kind of do, but not all the time. All right, personally, uh, tag people in posts. Put out more polls. Uh, I need to keep a database. of notes for users. I know my hair ring sucks right there, but just listen to me. So go high level, what it allows you to do is it allows you to have, uh, what's it called? It allows you to write notes on everybody. So anybody that joins when I allows that actual Facebook group, I immediately put them onto my, my go high level. Right. And then when people start posting on my Fun Hacker Lab group, I see maybe this guy's posting about e-commerce. Cool. So I'll just write that as a note. This guy's interested in e-commerce. I mean, if someone else is posting about something, something, you know, I'll just, what I want to be able to do is just keep a good database of notes based on everybody that's actually commenting on the Funnel Lab group. What that's allowing me to do is make more specialized videos to those people. You know, make, it's allowing me to really know my people because I can't, I'm not going to know everybody in my entire group on like a first name basis. What it's allowing me to do is just have a quick, I go back over here, have a quick reflection, like, oh, yeah, that guy, he was posting the other day about X, Y, Z. Yeah, so cool. It just allows me to know my members a lot better, okay? Because honestly, I, I have, like, the worst memory, especially when it comes to names, right? So my Facebook group is what I got to do. Next thing I got to do is I got to start providing more value, value. Okay? I start bringing us down here. So we all know, I made, uh, if you haven't seen it already, I made a, a video on the next steps or the future of Funnel Hacker Labs. And I'm just gonna break that down real quick. So Funnel Planner Tool. We're gonna have 
uh, tracking software. And we also have a heat map. All right, cool. <sighs> yeah, so I like that. So provide more value. And then also obviously increase my ad budget as well too. But yeah, that's, so that's what I wanna be able to do with Funnel Hacker Labs. Uh, now, see, this is where it kind of gets to a lot. And usually when you're doing these out, you might get overwhelmed because it just seems like there's a lot, of, whole lot of stuff you got to do. But as long as you keep a good planner, right? I, have, I recently upgraded to this massive plan. Let me show you guys real quick. You should upgrade to this massive plan over here where I couldn't, oh, this is a blank here this week over here. So I just kind of put like check marks on what I want to do every single day and I make sure I do it. Uh, what I had before was I had a planner that was more detailed per, per the day. So it would break down the day between hours in the day, which just kind of does, but it would also talk more about my goals. It would also talk about more how I'm feeling. But I found that I, when I was using that planner, uh, I didn't really fill out all the information. So I switched over to this and I, I kind of like how this feels, but the only thing is, the only thing I don't like about it is that this is this thing's huge, you know? This thing's really big. That's the only thing I don't like about it. So I'm still trying to experiment on what type of planner I like best. So after I finish up with this, I might go back to a smaller type of planner or something different. I'm just testing things out, you know? I'm only 22 years old. I don't know exactly what I need, you know? I'm still just testing things out, you know? So if you guys have a good recommendation for a better planner, keep myself organized, let me know. Comment down below or just send me a text, you know? Um, cool. Yeah, so that's what I want to do with, with Funnel Hacker Labs. And obviously I can go a lot more in detail with this, but right now I don't want to bore you with that. I uh, recommend you guys do this in your own time. Really just break down your goals. That very micro thing that you need to be able to do. You now go here and just start talking more about the heat map. What else can I do? What do I have to do here? I need a, a, a developer, right? I need to be able to put them in a contract. I need to be able to raise funds. Blah, blah. You know, you can just keep on breaking it down and what steps you need to be able to do in order to achieve this, you know? Just like that, kind of like a tree. So like I said, like a tree, it's like a plant where it kind of roots out to all these micro steps that you need to be able to do. And as you do it, just check them off, you know? Cool. Um, just a lot here now. Valify. So I want to be able to make this reach 300K. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to be able to do. I mean, I want to earn 300K off of that. So one of the ways that the team over here at Valify is actually gonna get paid is based upon selling, a selling tax. So now that selling tax is going to fluctuate anywhere between five and 10%, okay? When you sell the value tokens. Um, we don't have a tax on claiming, not claiming, we don't have a tax on compounding. So when you take your yield box, you take the rewards and you put it into making another yield box. We don't have any tax on that. But when you take that rewards and you actually start selling it and you sell it for, I don't know, for AVAX or regular USDC, when you take that value token and you sell it for that stable coin or whatever, then you get taxed on there. And that usually comes at a rate of, we're gonna have, it's gonna, it's gonna be anywhere between five and 10%, okay? And in order for me to make 300K, Especially with having six members, we gotta do some math really quick. Okay. Maybe some math. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, uh, don't blame me if I do some incorrect math here, okay? But it's just, just gotta get a concept over here. So 300K, I wanna hit 300K, All right? So 300. Let's reach card on the pause real quick. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking here. Because you also have six members. So what we need to do is we need to figure out 
So three million times, yeah, so three million times like 10% is 300K times you have six members. So six, oops, six times, we had to have around $18 million in the treasury in order for us to reach 300K for each member to be able to do that. That's just a rough estimate is what I'm kind of thinking about. So what do we have to do in order to hit that 18 mil treasury? So and that's just kind of by the way, that's just that's the shorthand math, just really quick who what I think we need to be able to do, you know. Uh, the math is probably wrong to be honest, because I didn't really based upon sell uh, selling tax, kind of just based upon you know, like ten percent, you know. Uh, but whatever, it's fine. Let's just pretend like it's like that. All right, this is pretend. In order for me to hit three hundred k to get paid from Valify for three hundred k, I the treasury needs to be able to hit an eighteen million dollar treasury. So now that we got that down, how are we going to be able to do that? So first thing we got to grow a Discord. Grow Discord. We're gonna to have to do a bunch of things. You got all right, so this is actually gonna start from the very beginning. So we gotta do some crazy marketing. All right, we need to make sure we got to do crazy marketing. We have to make sure so we have security. We gotta make sure all the we have a staff, a development team. Um, and there's a lot more that we gotta be able to do, but it's just, let's just stay like that for now, all right? Marketing, what do we gotta do over here? So in order to do that, let's say, let's say 10% of people in the Discord invest and on average, they all invest a grand, all right? Ooh, more math. <laughs> All right, 18. Turn. Pause this one, guys. We can do some math here. Oops. All right, so this is what like, I'm thinking. So if 10% of the Discord invests into this DeFi, and then based upon those 10%, let's say 10, each one of those 10% actually invested in a grand, let's just say. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to need 80, uh, 18,000 times one, one, two, three, 18,000 Discord members, right? It says 18,000 Discord members times 10%, which is 1,800 times 1,000 is 1.8 mil. If we just add a zero, in order to hit that, we're gonna need 180, one, two, three, 180,000 people in the Discord times 10% times 1,000. You need 180,000 people. in Discord. Oh, math. <laughs> but yeah, those are just some brief estimates over there. Security, we have over here. Security, we had to hire a security team. We already have some of those guys they developed. Uh, so hire a team, um, docs the team, uh, blah, blah. We got to do a bunch of other things, all right? But you guys kind of get the point, you know. I know those numbers are complete S H I T. Uh, it's based upon so many variables, at least. But it gives you a good understanding on what we need to be able to accomplish in order to achieve the goals they want to achieve. Okay. So now, where will we go with this? Okay. Now this is the point where now that you kind of seen the overall concept of what are my goals and how I plan them out. You need to do this for yourself. Now you need to get in front of a paper. 
when you put some music on, have no distractions, and really get crystal clear on the goals that you want to achieve. For example, like my goals over here, I want to be able to hit that one mil, right? I need that for me, in order for me to do that, I need to be able to get crystal clear. I need to be able to change my mindset. I need to be able to get crystal clear on how I'm going to do this, you know? And I have a little bit of constant drawing, a little rendering over here. Obviously, it's not, oops, oops, let me share that. So sure, cool. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say is you need to be able to get crystal clear on exactly what you want to achieve in order to create that plan. Because realistically, you can't, you can't expect those problems. You can't plan out those problems. You just got to solve it as they come. At least that's what I just, that's, at least that's what I've learned. And so far that's been true. Because whenever there's a problem that kind of comes, there's always a solution. And one of the biggest things that I've always learned that I always try to preach about is if you do, if a problem does arise and it's going to arise, something's going to happen, something's not going to be right. I'm not going to hit a million dollars just like that, nothing. But I'm going to run into problems. One other thing that I learned when I ran into a problem is to take a step back, relax, maybe sleep on it, maybe go on a bike ride, maybe go on a skateboard ride, something like that. Something just to kind of relax my brain so that I give my, my brain some time to think, go over the problem, and come back with a fresh mind. So what I'm trying to say is it's it's not going to be exactly how I planned like that. That entire map that you, I built out of that, that root tree, that I don't know what to call it. Let's call it the, the roots to success. It's a good name. That those roots to success is not going to go perfectly exactly how you planned it out. Matter of fact, nothing's going to go exactly how you planned it out. But it gives you a good point to start. And then when you start seeing problems arise, all you have to do is just optimize towards that Figure it, figure it out, maybe ask somebody else for help, go on a friend, whatever it is, and figure it as you go, you know? So for those of you guys that want to make a million dollars this year, best piece of advice, I mean, I probably can't give you advice yet because I have personally haven't made a million dollars yet, but I know a lot of people that have, right? And they've always tell me, it's late, plan it out, have a plan of action, you know? The number one piece of success I want number one piece of advice that they gave me. Well, actually, there's two pieces of advice. Be 100% confident that you can do it. Because you can. Know and be thankful for that you're already doing it, you know. Be grateful, be thankful, and know that you can do it. Be confident in yourself that you can do it. Second thing is always to plan it out. So those are two pieces of advice that I'm going to give to you guys and leave you guys off with that hopefully it's going to help. Hopefully this video helped you guys. Uh, if it did, let me know, okay? And I mostly wanted to make this video for, yeah, for me, and also for you guys to kind of learn how I plan things, uh, to maybe inspire you guys to do this yourself, make like a, the treat, the roots to success, make your own diagram of the roots to success for yourself, and really start this year out on a good note, you know? Start it out with a plan, not just BSing your way through it. Start this year out with a plan. Get ultra clear on the goals because you completely deserve your goals that you want to achieve. You, you deserve all that and more. So get ultra clear on what you want and go get it. I'll talk to you all later. Have a great one.